finally happened. I got my hands on a Pixel 6 Pro. Let's unbox it and then review it. Hi, welcome to Zgadget Review, Pixel 6 Pro. It comes in a very, very skinny, small box, which I'm gonna go ahead and open now. You have tabs here on the sides for the tape. The shininess, there we go. Before it gets all the fingerprints on it. As you can see, it's the black color phone. Here's a tab to lift up the phone off of the case. And it has a paper on top of the screen to protect it. So we're gonna put it here for now. Inside the box, we get a charging cable, USB-C, of course. We do not get a power brick because phone manufacturers do not send that anymore. If you have a cable that is regular USB, you can convert it to USB-C. Then here we have the same card removing tool. So your safety, paperwork, how the phone works with little instructions. And let's remove that paper cover from it. And so here we have the phone screen, back of the phone. So you can see it has already fingerprints right here from me touching it. It's very nice. It's, it's I will say pretty hefty. So there you go. Right, so now that we have unbox the device. Let me go ahead and put it through its paces and then get back here and give you my opinions. The screen measures 6.7 inches with a LTPO AMOLED QHD Plus 120 hertz refresh rate screen. The screen also supports HDR10 Plus. The front and back of the phone use Gorilla Glass Victus and the frame around the phone is aluminum except for the top of the phone, which is plastic, to allow 5G millimeter wave signals to pass through. The Pixel 6 Pro, as you can see, has this big camera bump right here, and that creates some issues. As you can see here, that bump traps dirt, and it is hard to wipe it. Even if you get in there with a cloth, it is, I mean, you can wipe it, but it's not going to be perfectly clean. It is kind of annoying. It's, I will say, a neat picky thing. Um, it's not a big deal overall, but if you're a person who doesn't like having their device dirty or having dirt, that little crevice is gonna get very, very annoying. Part of the review and in order to do some camera tests i went to the lincoln memorial i have the phone here which i'm i have the gps going on it uh, it's about a 25 28 minute drive i've been watching some youtube videos uh, this morning before i started filming as i'm driving there i'm going to play one game on xcloud for the length of the drive to kind of get an idea of um, how much battery that drains and all that. So here we go. I had some issues connecting. As you can see, it says trying to reconnect, go home. So playing um, xCloud on the road might not be the best thing to do. Right now, the phone is connected to Google Fi 5G. So as you can see, it seems like Google 5G isn't the best connection out there. I'm having issues. Well, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that the screen rolls on the sides like this. It is useful when you have a like map like I do running right now, where you can put it on the side and still have the rest of the screen useful. Right now I'm using the back camera and I have that. They have a feature for the Zoom microphone, which is supposed to allow you to get rid of some of the sound around you. So right now I have it turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to see if we can hear a difference between one and the other. 
Okay, so now we have the, what is called audio zoom and supposedly the background noise should be less and my voice should be better and easier to hear. Here are some examples of the camera. I took some pictures by changing the zoom on the camera in order to show you what it looks like. I am at the Lincoln Memorial, which is pretty far away from the Washington Monument. And so here I'm showing you the different distances of the camera lens and what an image looks like. Here we're at 10 times zoom. And here we are on the next part at 20 times zoom, which is not, which is done by software, it's not done by the lens. But the image, the picture that comes out of it looks pretty good where I thought it would have a lot of noise and look with a lot of grain, like it will have a lot of grain, but it's actually pretty good. And you can tell where the people are and they're not like blogs or anything like that. We have a closer look at the image. I got closer to the image. You can see here on the sides that there's a little bit of uh, haloing on the sides. But that's to be understood, it's again 20 times zoom and it's a very long distance. I will show you in a minute how far away this monument is from where I was. And here we have the other image and you can see the bottom of the monument and you can see the people there, the cars. I am very impressed with how the camera handles these images. Here we're inside the Lincoln Memorial and as you can see there's an fly that comes in. Is it just me? I guess the light with the light behind me. But you can see the camera is actually doing what it's supposed to do and it isn't over brightening or darkening things. Here's some more examples of how the camera zoom works. I'm trying to take a picture of a horse in the background, which is pretty far from where I'm standing. And so I'm using the different zooms in the camera to get the picture of the horse and as you can see the image looks really really good even though i'm far away from it and here we have a portrait picture of myself and it actually blurs the background well even though it was windy and for example here my hair was messy uh, flowing due to the wind pretty much kept my hair entirely within the picture here we have an example of what a night shot looks like. The phone also has some new features for the camera. It's a section that they're calling motion. And within that section, you have action pan and long exposure. Action pan focuses on a moving subject and adds a creative blur to the background. As you can see, the background is blurry while the subject is in focus. It was actually really easy and the results are not bad at all. The other feature is called long exposure and this adds a creative blur to moving subjects in the scene. Again, all you do is hold the phone to the subject. It is a little harder to capture this and the reason is because the subject has to actually be moving at a certain speed or the device won't actually be able to do that trick. I did this with somebody riding a bicycle. As you can see on the image here, you can barely see the person on the picture because obviously the person on the bicycle isn't big enough. I'm going to show you the other image that doesn't have the processing on it. So you can see the difference between both shots. Again, a pretty cool feature and all it takes is a press of a button. Continuing with camera features, we have Magic Eraser. And this allows you to remove anything that you want on an image. All you have to do is paint over what you want to remove and the AI in the phone will recognize what it is you're trying to remove and it's going to remove it for you. There I got most of the person. And you can kind of see from afar that there might have been something there. Maybe if I show you this picture and you had no clue that there was a person there. Once we get closer, that's where you can see the detail and whether the phone is doing a good job at replacing, in this case, person with another set of steps in order to make 
the image look the way it needs to look. And I will say for the most part, it looks good. It looks okay. You know, there's it's a little blurry. There's a little weird stuff going on on the other person's legs. And that's because the person's head was on top of that person's feet. Here I have the picture of a duck in the water. And once I press magic eraser, as you can see in the background where the people are, is giving me suggestions if I want to remove them. So that's something else that Magic Eraser will do. So it will suggest things that you might want to remove from the pictures. In this case, I remove the people in the background, but I'm more interested in removing the duck from the image. And so here I'm going to go ahead and draw over the duck. That machine is going to figure out there is a duck and it's going to remove it. Now we're going to get closer in the water to see if we can see if there was a duck there before. And as you can see, it did a really good job on replacing it with water. And this is the first time that this feature is on phone. I think it is only going to get better. Let's talk about the version of Android that comes with the phone. The phone comes with Android 12 with Material U. I have cover Android 12 Material U, so I'm not going to go into much detail here. I'm just going to highlight some of the features. I will link the videos that are done on Android 12 if you're interested in watching those. A cool feature is that you can actually talk directly to the phone and send a text message without having to type anything. So, and it's actually really, really well, especially with me who has an accent. So let me show you this. I would like to have some pizza today because pizza is the best food that I have ever had. And I cannot wait to have some more tonight. Send. And the text message was sent and that was really, really fast and easy. Let's try the translate feature. I have it set to Spanish because it speaks Spanish. So if I wanted to uh, type something in Spanish for it to go into English, this is how you will do it. So I'm going to press here and I'm just going to speak into it. Hola, mi nombre es Carlos. Me gustaría decirte sobre el Pixel 6 Pro. Es uno de los mejores teléfonos que he tenido en mis manos. Send. And there is a translation. Pretty cool, huh? Another thing that we have here with Android 12 is the recorder. And the recorder is actually really cool because it records obviously what you're saying, but it also creates a transcript. So I'm, as I'm speaking here, you can see that it is writing everything that I'm saying to you and showing you how quickly and easy understands what I'm saying in a way that you will have a transcript of anything that you're saying right away. Another feature of Android 12 is the device will pick colors depending on your wallpaper. So if I want to change my wallpaper, let's say that I want to go with one of these here. Let's go with this one since pretty colorful. So the phone technically is going to pick the colors that are the best for my home screen. So I have it set here to home screen. So we're going to set it. And as you can see, it changed the colors on the clock. So you can see there, there's different accent colors that we can pick from. When we pull down here, you can see that the colors here on the menu have changed. So when I put the volume up, it's going to change as well. So it does make changes for you that way. Another thing that we can use here is live caption and what this is going to do is going to caption video for example like we have it here you know doing a caption of what i'm saying one of the things that i'm not a huge fan of is the whole punch camera because if you're watching something that covers the whole screen you're going to have that space there always staring at you telling you hey look there is a hole on the screen sometimes you don't notice it like here but if you have anything that's normal content like this, you will always see that. I personally don't like having video on the whole screen because it cuts off top and bottom of the screens. So you lose some of the content in the image, but that's my preference. The device always felt very responsive. And when you're scrolling, it's very, very smooth, as you can see. We're going to test how the fingerprint sensor works here. So you can see it takes a couple of times for me to get the phone on. And then it is hit and miss. As you can see here, I'm having a couple of tries before that phone actually reads my fingerprint and it turns on. But then later on, when I try it once, just putting my finger on it, it works really fast, pretty much immediately without any issues.
here we have the March 2022 app day. We're going to test how the fingerprint sensor works this time. And also there's been some changes on the animation. What they haven't changed is how you, that you gotta wake up the phone by pressing on it once. And we're gonna go ahead and put my finger on the sensor. And as you can see, it worked immediately. It was quick and it didn't make me do it more than once. I'm gonna show you how the animation has changed there's this uh, cloud of light around the fingerprint sensor that comes up when you put your finger on it. Did you see that? So there's that, um, that it lights up around where your finger goes. Another thing I didn't show you earlier in the previous video is that you can pick up, with the, once you pick up the phone, that phone turns on and it shows you the fingerprint sensor to put your finger on it. So you don't necessarily need to tap the screen to wake the phone up. But if you have the phone down, the phone needs to be woken up before you can use your fingerprint on it. Of course, if you have it set to have the screen on all the time, which I wouldn't recommend, yeah, you won't have that issue. As you can see there, the phone is in an angle because of the camera bump. But thanks to the camera bump being there, you get no wobble on the device. A couple more specs of the Pixel 6 Pro. It is fully water resistant. It has reverse wireless charging. That means that if you have, let's say, a pair of wireless headphones, you can put them on top of the device and the device will actually charge the headphones for you. The battery is 5,000 milliamp hour battery. I guess we can say 5,003 milliamp hour battery. And on my battery tests, on the video that you saw where I went to the Lincoln Memorial and all that, I actually used the phone the whole day and I threw as much as I could to the phone. During that time, the phone lasted me about six hours, six and a half hours of battery life, but I was doing a lot on the phone. I did a lot of uh, video and pictures using the different tools that the phone has to edit pictures. So I, I listen to music, I watch videos, I play video games. So the, I did a lot with a device that you won't necessarily do in order to try to deplete the battery as much as I could in a, let's say, extreme case scenario of use. And that was about six and a half hours. With regular use, meaning playing games once in a while, watching videos, listening to music in a regular day, that is usually about eight to nine hours battery time. Now, I don't have a 30 watt charger, which is what this supports. This supports up to 30 watt fast charging. I have 18 watts fast charging and the battery usually takes about an hour to hour and a half to reach 100% from 0%. Usually it gets about to about, I will say 50% within 20 to 30 minutes. So that's not too bad. And again, I am talking about using an 80 watt, 18 watt charger, fast charger, because as I showed you earlier, that device does not come with a charging brick. So it's up to you to buy one or use an old one that you might have laying around. Phone calls are clear on this device. I'm able to hear people without any issues. People are able to hear me as well. Using the speakerphone, I haven't had any issues either. People were able to hear me without any problems. I was able to hear them too. The speaker, as I, as, as I showed you earlier, there's a speaker on the top. The earpiece works as a speaker and the speaker here on the bottom. That's how you get stereo sound. And I gotta say that the speaker on the top has a very, very small amount of sound. And there are certain content that where you will actually be able to tell how much louder the bottom speaker is compared to the top speaker. And that can be distracting. I was watching a couple of YouTube videos and uh, depending on how they edited the sound, I could, I could tell that the sound was heavily coming out of from the bottom of the device while the top of the device was, had very thin sound. And it happened with a few TV shows as well. So if you're watching content without a headphone, that might be a little bit of an issue that might be distracting 
The phone did get hot to the touch a few times while I was using it. I never felt that the phone got slower as it got hot, as sometimes it can happen with a device. And, and I was happy with the performance of the phone. Google is using the Tensor chip, which is the first time that they have made their own silicon or design their own silicon to put in a device. And I think they did a really good job for being the first. Um, I will say that it's very compatible uh, or comparable to Snapdragon, the newer Snapdragon chipsets. That, that The way they have done the software along with the hardware makes the chip work very well. I personally did not benchmark it, not because I don't care about benchmarks, but you know, numbers tell you only so much and you, you can have the best numbers in the world then doesn't necessarily translate to how the device behaves when you're using it and i didn't have any issues opening cameras having multiple websites open at once or watching videos or anything like that i was extremely impressed i must say the phone overall feels good in my hand i actually been using the phone for over a week now without a case i do have a case that i'm going to put on in on it um in order to you know long-term use but for the review i wanted to be able to hold it without a case to see how slippery it was if it was you know dangerous to use it without a case well the answer is yes and no and the reason is because yes because it's all glass front and back is glass and the way this bump is here the phone Every time that you drop it, most likely it's going to land on the back and most likely it's going to land on that camera bump. So because the phone is essentially all glass, my recommendation would be yes, use a case. If you want to risk it, if you are adventurous, then in that case, you can take your chances. This phone isn't as slippery. I, I never felt like it was going to drop off my hands. I never felt like I'm, you know, I might lose it as I'm, holding it and things like that the only thing is when you put it on surfaces depending on the surface of course of it will definitely slide and fall off things uh, that happened to me a couple of times when i put it on the couch a couple of times i actually use the bump the camera bump as an anchor um, in a way where i will hook the phone on something and then i will walk away and that gave me the security that the phone will at least stay in place while I wasn't around. I usually don't recommend cases, but I personally got the other series symmetry case, which I'm going to link uh, down there too, in case you want to get it. And I feel uh, confident this is going to work with the phone well. Personally, I prefer a clear case. Let's see, let's put the phone in here and see what it looks like. So here you can, get a look of what the case looks like it protects the camera there so you can see that um, the lip covers the camera so if you drop it or anything you'll be protected and the same thing here around the screen the pixel 6 pro starts at 899 for 128 gigs it goes up from there my personal opinion is that it's a great phone for Google. If you're an Android user, if you have never used straight Android or you've been thinking about getting a Pixel phone, I you cannot go wrong with this device. As I know as I pointed out, there are some issues, for example, the fingerprint scanner, which is a little slow to react. I wish that was a little faster. It did get a lot faster with the March update as I showed you. And what I like is that Google continues to work on improving the device. They've been working very hard at addressing the issues that people are having and trying to make the experience better with each update. My recommendation is if you're in the market for a device and you're an Android user, I will go with this. Compared to a Samsung, it's a lot cheaper and I think you get more for your money. What do you think about the Google Pixel 6 Pro? Have you been able to experience it? Do you own it? Have you had any issues? Let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.